When it comes to printed circuit boards, I've been making PCBs by hand for years and years. Just like this one, it's a modulator in an AM transmitter that was all marked up by hand and etched in ferric chloride in the workshop. It's a fine technique, but I've been telling myself for a very long time that I really need to get with the times and learn to do professional PCBs with CAD. Now, I've never done a CAD PCB before. So of course, while I've stumbled across the ads for all of the big supplies of PCBs, I really didn't know which one to choose. I had a look at this site. It's called pcbdirectory.com. And it was very helpful because it presents all of the world's PCB fabricators. And it also allows you to compare now, I have no particular alliance with any of these companies whatsoever, but I have to say that the one that seemed to be a reasonable choice for a beginner like me was JLC PCB. And I stress again, this is not sponsored. I'm not that big. It was just simply a matter that they seemed like a good place to start. So I chose a circuit for a switched mode DC to DC regulator. It's effectively a, a homemade buck converter. And it's a regulator circuit that I've reproduced three or four times for various transmitters, that is AM transmitters. So the first job was to translate it into a schematic. And using easy EDA, this was really quite straightforward to do. It's just a matter of picking parts either from the library or from the pre-canned part selection. And you do have the option, if you like, of getting JLC PCB to do your surface mount assembly for you. Well, that was a step too far for my first board, so I might do that next time. Once I was happy with the schematic, I went to the PCB layout. And this just involves bringing all of the components from the schematic through. They all cluster off the board and you have to drag them onto the board and then lay them out. Once they were roughly laid out, I used auto route. And on a relatively simple board like this, auto route did an absolutely fine job. I was able to do both front and back, top and bottom. And, uh, and then it was just a matter of uh, really just sort of laying out the components to my satisfaction bearing in mind that there might be some high current tracks, so I manually enlarged those, and just getting the right balance of components. Once I was happy with the board and it passed all the checks, I was able to generate the gerbers and upload them to the JLC PCB ordering page. And this was all very easy to do. It all went very smoothly. Within a week, a little parcel arrived on my doorstep. And here it is. On closer inspection, the board looks pretty good. It's got a nice high gloss coating over both front and back. One thing that I was a bit worried about was had I got the right footprints for the through hole components and looks like I've avoided a disaster. So standard resistor is going to fit there and I'm sure the capacitors are going to fit fit those that whole dimension as well. The IC sockets just dropped in like a dream. Perfect alignment and that one which I've done are just a pleasure to solder. These little miniature trim pots fit just perfectly. Now the main problem that I've discovered is that when I designed the board and submitted it, I forgot to put a, an earthed copper circular pad or disc around the corner holes. But because I did not create that pad in my PCB design, there would have been no contact between the 3M bolt 
and the earth plane, both top and bottom. So I took it into the workshop. I've just lightly filed the corners to remove that blue lacquer and uh, the copper is, has come up. So I will tin the corners, top and bottom, just scrape, scrape away the rest of that enamel to make sure that the 3M hardware makes a nice clean connection. So note to self, for all future boards, don't forget that circular pad. And of course, if you put one top and bottom, it will plate all the way through. Rookie mistake number one. Perhaps rookie mistake number two, and I was aware of this when I was finalising my design, and maybe I just got a little bit impatient. But, uh, but in the end, I allowed the components, particularly these capacitors, to extend right to the edge of the board. That won't matter, but when I look at the board, I think it looks a little bit kind of unconventional. So I think on all future boards, I'll make sure that there is a uh, short, um, say, two, maybe, probably a two and a half, three mil border right around the board. So it looks like the uh, holes for the switching FET are correct and also for the uh, shunt diode there, so they're nice big holes. In fact, they are square, they are oval-shaped holes to accommodate the, um, the wide, flat blade of those um, power devices pins. And uh, nice big holes on this uh, large, high-voltage high um, capacitor here. I've built up this regulator board and it's all working. So here it is sitting in its uh, mechanical stand. The pulse width modulator I see is a TL598 from Texas Instruments. It's a kind of an updated TL494. If you've ever pulled, pulled apart an old PC power supply, a switch mode power supply, there's a good chance that you might have found a TL494, very ubiquitous PWM chips. So this is generating the pulse train, which then lands on this IC, an IR2110. That's a high side and a low side gate driver. A close up of the switching FET and the shunt diode there. This is an STW47N60, so quite a hefty device. Um, probably good for about three to 400 watts. And then the main regulation or DC switching action is done between this 120 microhenry choke and this 470 microfarad capacitor. Here is a test load. It's a 50 watt halogen 12 volt globe, the sort of thing that we used to have in our ceilings in those GU10 fittings. So that's with regulation off. Now turning up the PWM duration or the pulse width control. So turning the regulator successively on. We're now at uh, one amp, two amps, and it's topping out at about 3.4 amps. So back that off. I'll do that again and we can watch the switching action and the power it's drawing. So there's an amp, 2 amps, 3.4 amps. Now looking at the output of the TL598. So no pulse strain there now, just tuning up the duty cycle. There's a little bit of pulse. Pulse width or the pulse duration expanding and power's coming right up. Globe glowing full brightness now. That's a duty cycle of 89%. Back it off. And there it is. This regulator's working as well as I had hoped. So I'm very happy with it and I'm extremely happy with the board and my experience of doing my first CAD printed circuit board. I've still got three left over. I actually mailed one to a friend, so hopefully there'll be another one made up in the coming days.
I've thoroughly enjoyed doing PCB design and using the fabrication service, and I've started three or four other schematics for other boards. Hopefully I'll get those through the factory in coming weeks. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you next time.